Hey my people, how you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic damn day. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Obviously, 2024, bigger and better things. Let's hope we can achieve them together. That would be fan damn -tastic. Obviously, we are starting off with how to start a career mode, a realistic career mode, with the likes of Pochettino and with the likes of Chelsea. Now, you will notice I'm missing my cap, but it's okay. It's all right. I got a fresh trim, um, so things are looking quite bright to start off 2024. Now, naturally, with a realistic career mode um, that you're, you're potentially going to be going for, um, it is going to start off with tactics and how Pochettino sets up his team. And of course, we have seen them set up with a back five. To start off the season, they had the likes of Chilwell playing as like a, a winger slash hybrid wing back that would come back on defense. And so basically a back five system. But we've seen Poch and Chelsea evolve since. And of course, I think it has to do with the likes that uh, Chilwell did get injured. But essentially, he has more or less stuck to a 4-2-3-1, and we have done those tactics on this channel. So, as for always, with these realistic, you know, career mode starts, I will link those tactics at the end of this video. If you are keen to see it, please check it out. Support the channel. If you are new, subscribe. That would be fan damn fantastic as well. Um, but yes, more or less, you can go ahead and have a look and implement those tactics into your realistic Chelsea side. Now, obviously, having a look at the side, it has got 45 players in total, which is a hell of a lot. It is a lot of players. It's a very bloated squad. Um, I know that the likes of Ian Matson, he is linked with a move away in January, which we are now in. So it will be very interesting to see if we see him at the end of January, still in a, a blue Chelsea, Chelsea shirt. Or potentially playing for somebody else. I know last season he did very well at Burnley. This season hasn't really gotten his opportunity. Although I know he did start uh, their last game. I think. I I'm pretty sure he started uh, as, as their right winger. So maybe Pochettino is coming around to him. Although I do think that the likes of Bowie and the board and whatnot. They'll be more interested in, you know, maximizing profits. Trying to, like, you know, keep off the FFP bad books. Um, and I think what Matson is a, a youth product. So all that money that they do like get from the deal it goes straight into like the green column of ffp good so i, I do think that we will probably see the likes of mattson leave which is why i've gone ahead and put him on the transfer list the likes of um, dylan williams as well a, a youth product probably also heading out the door i mean when you've bought in the likes of cucarella and chilwell over the last three or four seasons paying 50 million and around 60 million for both it it's it's 110 million on two left backs that you need to get the best out of so I don't think there's much room in the squad for the likes of Madsen and, and Williams, so they'll definitely be gone. I mean, the likes of Thiago Silva, it says here he's retiring at the end of the season. We don't know yet if he will be. I think we might see him next season in a Chelsea shirt regardless. Um, but yeah, I think it's time to move on from uh, a very good player in Thiago Silva and move on to the more up-and-coming players like the likes of um, Axel de Sarsi. Chalaba, I know, is leaving. He's been linked with a move to Bayern Munich. I mean... Jose Mourinho and Roma are also looking at him potentially. And the fact that he hasn't like featured this season at all, um, at least I'm, I'm pretty sure he hasn't. But if he has, it's been very far in future to the point where I don't know if he has. And that just tells you one thing, like he's had an injury. I don't think he's got an injury. I think he's leaving and they don't want him in the squad. Just like with uh, Malang Sa, he's probably also going to be out the door in January and this is good because you want to try and get rid of some of these players try and shrink the squad because like I said there's 45 players here of course some of them are being counted even though they've been loaned out but you need to try and shrink the squad as best as possible the likes of Badashile he's apparently linked with the move away I don't think so if in fact I think he is Chelsea's best defender um 22 bright bright future left footed very talented obviously has a real face and if you know me you know that I appreciate um, those small details in this game. Um, Wesley Fofana, another massive talent that's been hit with injuries. I think it's not far-fetched to believe that Pochettino would definitely want to keep him in the squad. I know I've read things about Poch really liking him, so you know what? Fair play. But at the same time, if you d had to get rid of him to try and shrink that squad, bring some more money into the team, I, I don't think it would be a bad idea. Although, Chelsea did spend, what was it, like 75 million on him? So, First try him out and see. I, I do know that in terms of EAFC24, I know his potential has gone down a fair amount. So you also have to like look at that and those uh, parameters as well. Um, and then, of course, you've got the likes of Levi Colwell, which I do think you should keep. And don't play him as a left back, even though Pochettino loves doing that. Play him as a centre back. 
and try and get the best out of him. Try and pair him up with the likes of Batashile. Of course, you do have two left-footed center backs then, which is a bit annoying. But, you know, having one in the team, one out the team, having one on the bench more times than not, it will help you. Obviously, they've got massive potentials themselves. And I don't think you can go wrong. Of course, he doesn't have a real face, which does suck. Hopefully, in 2024, or which we're in now, um, he does eventually get one. I think the likes of um, Colwell, uh, Hoylin, um, all those younger players that actually don't have real faces, I think they will be getting um, a nice upgrade fairly, fairly soon. Although, I think that's just a rumor at the moment, but we don't know. Um, yeah, if you guys, like I said, if you guys know me, you know I love the real face um, players. Uh, obviously, Reese James and Malo Gusto, who apparently Pochettino doesn't want in the side, but I think it's also a bit of a bit of spin, a bit of BS, um, because to be honest with you, Malo Gusto, whenever he's played, I've consistently thought of him as a fantastic player. I mean, he was linked with a, a move to Manchester United uh, just before he went to Chelsea, um, which did, you know, it hurt my feelings because I really wanted him because I really liked him at Lyon. Um, and I just think he could be a fantastic player going forward. I mean, with Reese James potentially out for the rest of the season, you're going to have to rely on the likes of Gusto taking up that, that starting right-back role um, on a consistent basis. So I think, yeah, should definitely keep him. Um, and if you do tend to sell him, if you're trying to like, stick to what Pochettino once so, and you're going to relate to those rumors a bit more than fair play but who are you going to bring in that's going to be an adequate backup i mean as a 76 overall 20 years of age backing up the one of the best right backs in the world when he's healthy i don't think you can get much better and, and then you know speaking of much better um moises kaiseido obviously a 79 21 year old not too bad lavia as well obviously very young team that you're you're going to be using so it's best to try and, you know, play them as much as possible, get them involved in the games, or even potentially loaning out the likes of Lavia. He's 19, 73 overall. Of course, Chelsea in real life spent like 65 million on him, um, which I don't think they would actually do. They, I don't think they would loan out a 65 million pound signing. Um, but regardless, I think it could be a good effort to try and, you know, make sure that he is getting minutes alongside the likes of Caicedo throughout the course of your first season or two. Um, as for Raheem Sterling, fantastic player, should try and build the offense around him as well as in Kunku, to be fair. Um, and then he has another one, by the way. Conor Gallagher, apparently linked with a move to Spurs. It's, it's apparently very close. I just think it's a dumb idea to get rid of one of your best players this season. Another one with Gusto. Fantastic. Um, obviously, Poch trusts him enough to give him the captain's armband when Reese James has not been playing. Um, so it, it, it's a bit weird to me, but at the same time, I don't put anything past what's bowie and and the board are trying to do uh, or bowley whatever the, the hell his name is but yeah again a, a, a rumor around 40 45 million to spurs i mean i'd take this man at manchester united i think he is the perfect link in the midfield that we don't have um but yes a, a link to spurs i think he fits spurs very well i think he fits pochettino very well um but again 40 45 million straight into the green column uh, for the ffp books because uh, obviously he's a youth academy product so it would definitely be a big plus to what Chelsea are trying to do and of course they have bought in the likes of Enzo Fernandez, and we were just talking about Caicedo and Lavia so maybe there's no room in the team for, for uh, a Conor Gallagher trying to fit an Nkunku into the midfield as well as Lavia and Caicedo it, it's a give and take I mean you have spent what 230 million pounds um, on two midfielders in Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez. so I, I, I can kind of understand it from that aspect, but from just the football fan visual aspects and how he plays in the game itself, why would you want to get rid of this man right here? Like, he is perfect. He's amazing. He's incredible. And he's got like a potential of, what, 83, 84? Very serviceable bench rotational player, if you ask me. Um, of course, you've got Ogachukwu, which I would potentially loan out, um, although he is showing to be fairly decent um, so far for Chelsea. Um, Chukwu Maker. Um, now... With some of these players, okay, obviously you're playing a 4-2-3-1. Um, you'll see here with, with uh, Carney Chukwameka, uh, I've gone ahead and set him up to be an attacking midfielder. I think that's a better spot for him going forward. I think he suits the attacking role a bit better as well. And of course, that role is taken up by Nkunku now. Like we've seen Poch, he's spoken about, you know, Nkunku. I see him as a striker or as a number 10. Now... You can't really have an Enzo Fernandez being the backup number 10. Firstly, from a financial aspect, it doesn't work. And I don't think it would be very realistic either way. 
So the likes of Chukwameka, of course, bought in for like three or four million. I, th I think maybe maybe a bit more. Not too sure, but he's got he's got a high potential. So have him come off the bench for a few games, back up the likes of um, Nkunku, and then have him progress and grow. Um, you'll see for the likes of Gallagher as well as Fernandez. I've also gone ahead and implemented the defensive midfield position change for Gallagher, and I think I did the same for Enzo Fernandez. There, I did. Um, it's going to take 111 weeks uh, for Enzo, which obviously with if you. Uh, bring in the correct coaches to match the style of play and, and whatnot it'll obviously be a lot faster but nonetheless you are going to try try and you know implement and shape these players into the perfect players for the rotational system the tactics and what you're trying to you know show on the field um so more or less that's what i've gone with for them of course don't make the sassi a right back i think pochettino with that has it, it hasn't worked like the sassi he's not fast enough he doesn't have the technical ability so keep the sassi as a sense back in fact again in those weird rumors that have come out that's the sassi and gusto should probably leave again the sassi he's linked with the move away but they've just bought him in literally like a few months ago um and this this man right here he has been very very impressive so you've got cole palmer of course but in my opinion madawake obviously with a better overall he should be starting more over palmer in fact from a from a pure perspective of an outsider fan looking in looking at fc24 overall wise loan out cole palmer for two seasons you'll see his overall in like boost incredibly high you'll see um when he comes back into the team he'll be more ready for it um but obviously if you're a chelsea fan you're very attached to this man and to be honest he should have a higher overall at least at least uh, the same as as a Madawake, to be fair uh, but we'll we'll see with the uh, with updates relatively soon um, another man, Mikhailo Mudrik. Now again, for the development plan and everything, I've gone ahead and made him, or I'm attempting to change him into a left midfielder, and I think he should do this. It goes with the tactics as well, um, although it does take quite a while, but I think he's a very good serviceable player um, to bring into your team, rotating him with Sterling, uh, making sure that he is getting sufficient game time, bring him off the bench every now and then. It is quite effective. Um, obviously, he's got loads of pace as well. And then this man right here, Christopher Nkunku, the man that you should probably, alongside with Raheem Sterling, like I said, shape the offense around. Um, now, obviously, he's a center forward, busy converting him into an attacking midfielder. I do think that with this 4-2-3-1, I don't see Poch changing his system into like a 4-3-3. And I don't see him as a single striker, if you get what I'm saying. At, at um, RB Leipzig, he was a... A dual striker, he was in a dual striker partnership with the likes of Paulson or Werner. He was very much in tune with playing as that secondary man, running off of the, the shoulder of the more natural number nine. Um, so I think more or less for this squad, this team, and for the player himself, you'll get the best attributes, the most realistic attributes out of Nkunku by playing him in that number 10 position. Um, and then finally we've got the likes of Broja and Jackson now. Of course, this man has been linked with a move away, although I think it is also BS. I think Pochettino really likes him. Of course, also another youth academy player. So it wouldn't surprise me, but I haven't gone ahead and put him on the transfer list just yet. And then, of course, we've got the likes of Nick's, Nick Jackson. Um, I think, personally, he's, he's going to be decent, but I don't think he's going to be the superstar that Chelsea fans hope. I think off the bench, he can give you quite a few goals i mean he's got eight goals this season let's let's give him credit where it's due but he hasn't looked good and maybe it's just adjusting to the the premier league and what it has to offer but i think chelsea need a striker they need a well we'll get into that but they need a, a good number nine up front to try and hold down anchor that offense link up play within kunku bring other players and around be able to tuck away the easy opportunities that in kunku and um co will create for them and to be honest, Broja and Jackson, they, they've made a pig's ear of it, to be fair. And then, of course, you've got the likes of David Washington, who, again, young kid from Brazil, 18 years of age, hasn't been playing that much. If anything, you loan him out or you potentially sell him. I personally, just me, I would sell the likes of Datra Fofana and then loan out the likes of, you know, David Washington. Of course, with the, the, the reason why we have so many young players in this Chelsea squad, if you don't know, most of you would. But it's obviously the, the loan rule system. You allowed like six loans or something, or eight loans or something like that per season, um, which is why you've got 
quite a few younger players still in this side that should have originally been loaned up because essentially Chelsea wanted to, to sell Lukaku, they wanted to sell Ziyech, but they couldn't, so they had to loan them out. So that took up two loan spots, whereas the likes of Washington should have been loaned out, but he wasn't able to. Um, but yes, anyways, we move on to the transfer targets. Okay, so starting off with some transfers that I've researched and read and also just intuition has popped into my mind. But of course, starting off at the back with the goalkeeper, of course, Aaron Ramsdale not playing for Arsenal at this moment in time is linked with the move away. Will it be in January? I don't think Arsenal will let him go, but maybe in the summer we'll have to see. And obviously Chelsea, Kep has gone to, to Real Madrid. They, they're probably going to sell him to Real Madrid. I don't think they're goalkeepers that they have in right now in the likes of Sanchez and Petrovic. I don't think they're good enough. I think maybe, you know what, maybe Petrovic could be, but we don't know. We, he hasn't had a solid run of games yet. He's played like two or three games. They have won two of those games, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, we It's too early to tell, but I think, you know, it's a no-brainer. He, he has been linked with a move to Chelsea, but I think Aaron Ramsdale more or less fits the bill for what Chelsea are looking for. Good solid shot stopper, can play out from the back. Not the best at doing so with his kicking abilities, but he can do it nonetheless. Um, and again, 84 overall, I don't think you can go wrong. Of course, if you are playing with stricter instructions, it will make it quite hard to try and sign Ramsdale. But nonetheless, I think he is a, an adequate target for your career mode going forward. A another man here, um, Amar Dedic from uh, Salzburg. He's only 20, of course. It, it, goes hand in hand with what Chelsea and their transfer scheme is of trying to sign players under the age of 25, um, mainly teenagers trying to develop them. But this man can play on the right or the left and this kind of fits hand in hand with potentially also what Pochettino is looking for. Because obviously, if that rumor is true that Gusto is potentially leaving, this man could fit the ball and fits Pochettino's system. Or potentially they are looking for another right back because Obviously, Reese James is out for the rest of the season, but then what happens next season, we don't know. So, if you do sell Gusto, I think Dedic is a very good target for you guys to potentially go and get. Um, and then, of course, we've got two centre-backs here, uh, Diamande and Tar. Now, obviously, both of them are having really good seasons. Tar is slightly older, 27, but he has been linked. I, I've done my research. He has been linked. Six foot five. The ability to play out from the back, as you can see there with the weak foot, it's a four-star, so he can play on the left-hand side or potentially the right-hand side fitting quite nicely into what Pochettino might want. Maybe if he does re resort back to that back three system. Obviously, we've seen with Leverkusen this season, Tar has played very, very well in a back three. So, you know, maybe a bit more experience in the back line. Of course, Badashile, um, Fafana, uh, Dasasi, they're all young. The only real experience in that back line is uh, Thiago Silva. So, you know, a bit more experience in, in the likes of Jonathan Tar could go quite a long way um and maybe Chelsea see the the likes of Fofana heading out the door maybe they see the likes of De Sassi leaving we don't know just yet but he is a transfer target alongside the likes of Osmane Diamande and then finally like I said earlier to you guys uh, Chelsea have been lacking a striker a clinical man and I think Dominic Solanke former Chelsea man himself I think he's a flavor of the month. Obviously, he's got 12 goals. He's having a fantastic season for Bournemouth. Bournemouth have been killing teams. They destroyed Manchester United at Old Trafford, which sucks. Um, recently lost to Spurs, yes, but he is having a very, very good season, Dominic Solanke. And to be fair, 6 foot 2 physical. He's English as well. 25, so he does match the, the potential Chelsea quota of, of got to remain within this age bracket. I think he would be a very, very good fit. I think... He has all the core fundamentals of what Pochettino wants. I mean, if you looked at Harry Kane under um, Pochettino, I think Dominic Solanke could do it maybe to a slightly lesser effect because Harry Kane is a world-class talent and was amazing, incredible and everything. But I think having a, a player like Solanke come in, he doesn't offer you that superstar name that has to start every single game and demand to, to play over Nicholas Jackson. You can still have that nice rotation. And I still think that he could link up quite well with Nkunku and Sterling. So I don't think you can go wrong with either um, of these four targets. I mean, the likes of uh, Victor Jokerish, of course, recently signed uh, for the likes of Sporting from Coventry after an amazing season. He's also got a real face, which is damn near great. Um, but again, if we're talking realistically now, 
I think this is the, the most realistic and the best striker that Chelsea can get. Um, as you can see here with the play styles he's got, he's got press proven. So he's got the ability to pass out of those tight spaces, the, the link up abilities there. I've seen um, countless highlights of him whilst playing um, at Sporting where he's made that deep channel run into the left hand side or even the right hand side. Collected the ball, held up very nicely and linked up quite effectively with either the, the winger or the midfielder and it's led to goal scoring opportunities which essentially is what you would want as your, your spearhead to the attack. I mean, having Enzo Fernandez and Kunku, Sterling all link up with the, the, the point of your attack is very, very important. And something that Jackson, he's getting there, but he doesn't quite have just yet. And of course, like I said with Solanke, he fits into the, the, the realistic Chelsea um, aspect of he's 25 years of age. Now, he does have a release clause in this career mode, um, or this career mode save that I've loaded up, um, 28 million. Now, if Chelsea want to buy him in real life, it's going to cost somewhere around 70 to 80. I think I may have, may have even seen like 100 million, but I don't think that's as realistic. Um, and to be fair, you'd probably only be able to buy him if there is no release clause in season number two. So it's a bit of a, a waiting situation. But personally, if, if I'm starting a realistic career mode, I'm going for this man off the bat. This is my number one target. And then we have a, a man that every every big big uh, six club is is dreaming of, uh, Victor Osherman. Um, 88 overall, 24 years of age. He's got some crazy playing styles. He's got everything you'd want in a striker. But if we're talking like realism now, unless Chelsea offer him the craziest bag we've ever seen, I don't see him going to Chelsea. He's going to want Champions League football. Chelsea are probably not going to make top four let's let's be honest maybe top seven if they can turn things around but i don't see him leaving napoli and going to chelsea in january firstly and secondly if chelsea don't make top four why would he want to to go there and like i say unless they offer him some some crazy money massive sign-on bonuses and all that stuff i just don't think it's as realistic and then finally a man that i um spoke about with liverpool 18 years of age uh damien pizarro also linked with the moves to Chelsea, of course, he is 18. Fits hand in hand with the Chelsea scheme. Um, but yes, I don't know too much about this kid. I've watched a little bit of him. Uh, the, the highlights, obviously. And everybody looks really good in highlights. But I think he could be the real deal. I mean, 18 years of age. Uh, he's from Chile. Six foot one as well. Very tall, physical man. Um, right footed. Decent weak foot. Um, but the, yeah, more or less, apart from reading the stats on the screen, that's more or less all I can, I can really tell you with um, this kid right here. So it would be very interesting to see, although I will say this, I don't think Chelsea need to go ahead and sign another 18 year old striker. Somebody that's 25, these two guys, I think that's the, the winning ticket. And of course there's also Ivan Tony. Now, obviously moving on to the scouting system and the, the youth scouting network. Now I've gone ahead and obviously bought three scouts, but we'll start off with the first one. Obviously trying to scout young talents in England, um, is essential you are an English club you need to meet that quota as well and then I remember reading something under Graham Potter and I don't think it's really changed that much but Chelsea are scouting heavily in uh, Brazil or South America and that's why I've sent um, two scouts to South America one being Brazil the other being Uruguay I think Uruguay is, is currently a hot topic of interest um, with a lot of the, the English teams at the moment so yeah, I would suggest those three areas to try and find the next best youth talent in the world. Now, obviously, we were just talking about the youth scouts, but talking about the normal scouts. Now, obviously, we've spoken about the 25 brackets. They have to be 25 or younger for them to fit into this Chelsea side. So we'll just go over three of the scouting options that you can go with. So firstly, I've gone with any position, 16 years of age and a contract length of zero to five years. Um, I'm pushing the wrong buttons here. Um, just going into the instructions itself. Now, I have also gone with the 16 to 20 because I think that gives you a, a better barometer and measurement of some of the prospects that you might be able to scout. Um, and then for the overall conditioning of the players, first team quality, yes, and potentially a world-class prospect. You want to try and sweep up as much young talent. It, it's a very realistic Chelsea move. Um, and if you can find them at a cheaper rate, then 100% go for it. It is a career mode, of course. You are trying to give yourself every tiny little advantage you can. And then just having a look at the next set of instructions for the scouts. 
Um, I've gone with 21 to 25, obviously the, the next bracket category. Again, first in quality and now this time world class. So if you can potentially find a up and coming young player that's within that bracket, 100% go find them whether it's a goalkeeper, whether it's a striker, if you can find anybody better than the likes of Solanke or Jokerish or potentially Aaron Ramsdale, um, or maybe even a centre-back, then 100% go ahead and sign them. Of course, my transfer targets are based off of real-life rumours and, and whatnot, but more times than not, rumours never come true. Um, so if you are more comfortable using this system and your scouts, it's more realistic as well, I would say 100% go with it. Um, and then finally, obviously, the striker set of instructions so obviously looking for a striker 16 to 25 and then i've gone with the three overall conditions of first team quality world class and then a world class prospect so again if you can find a, a, a 16 to 20 year old superstar striker in the making 100 go ahead and sign them up so yes people that is what i would do for a realistic chelsea career mode if you have enjoyed this please hit that like button down below um subscribe if you are new i will obviously also link the realistic tactics as well um, but yes, I am looking very forward to what 2024 has to offer. Mad love and appreciation for all the support I've gotten from you guys. It's been amazing. And I think, you know, this channel has a lot of room to grow. I'm always trying to put out the best possible content. You'll also see that, that I'm not in my usual um, environment. I am away at the moment and it will continue to be like this for the next week or so. And then I will be back home creating the best possible tactics for you guys um to try and improve your eaft career modes and how you guys want to play fc24 um but yes until the next time hit that like button subscribe and i am out